here we are. I don't know how to actually introduce the show because I've <laughs> rebranded. To really pull the curtain back, this would normally be called Rewind. I'm here with my co-host. Like, like one of these days, I'm going to get the pointing right. With my co-host, Hillary Houghton, right here. Boom, 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 boom. Social HQ. Normally, this would be called the Rewind Show. But... I've, 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 I've thrown that out a little bit. We're going to we're gonna scrap it for parts. This is now called Tripod Live because we really had like this great idea. This is a great idea. Today's show, great idea. Agree, Hillary? Agreed. Because last episode, if you remember last episode, we talked about a couple platforms we liked and then we we're like, why don't we just do a whole episode on marketing tools and systems that we're thankful for. And what better time than around Thanksgiving to do that show? So that's what we're doing today. It's a great idea. It's a beautiful idea. I guarantee we're definitely the first people to come up with it. And it's going to be ripped off all over the place. So thank you <laughs> for joining us today. We have a bunch of categories. So you're a creative business owner watching this. Um, we're going to tackle a bunch of different categories. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me pull up our categories. Hold on one second here. Let me go to my other screen. So we have social media management, Hillary, number one. Okay. Then we have content creation. That's going to be our biggest category. We got a lot of stuff in there. So if you're looking to find tools to create content for your socials, uh, stay tuned for that one. Email marketing, live streaming and video, and productivity. Those are the categories we're going to be discussing today. And we've, we've both compiled lists. We've come up with our lists and- um, Checked it twice. We have checked it twice. I've checked it twice at the very least. <laughs> now, some of these, full disclosure, a couple things before we get started. One, these platforms are a mix of free and paid. And I guess you could say, Hillary, like freemium and paid. Absolutely freemium. Right? Freemium, mm -hmm. what you don't know, is like you get a little taste for free. And then if you some oftentimes want other features or want to do more volume or whatever, you have to pay for it. So freemium. Uh, the other thing is in the description below, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on Periscope, I guess hop over to YouTube. I don't know what to tell you. But in the YouTube description below are links to all of the platforms we're talking about today. Um, some of them are affiliate links. And what does that mean? It means at no cost to you, if you click the link and if you sign up and if you pay, then Hillary or I get a small, almost laughable percentage of that payment for referring. Thank you for the bubble gum. It's, it really is like... I have one, it's like, oh, it'll it'll pay out at $50. And it's like every transaction is a dollar. It's like, oh, she's Louise. So I promise you, those affiliate links, they're not more expensive. In fact, some of them, at least some of mine, I was able to scope some deals for you. So super exciting. Hillary, is there anything else I'm missing? Before? I think you've got it covered. I really do. This is just a good broad stroke of what we love. And sharing it with others. I'm it's not for it. No. I, mean, it, it's I think a we did a good job. I think we did a good job limiting ourselves. I think we did too. This is this is this is not a as they call it a it's more than a moose bouche, but it's not a full on golden corral buffet. Okay. This it's is disciplined. A, yeah, you're gonna feel good, you're gonna feel healthy after it, like full, but not like gross full. Have you ever been to one of those Brazilian steakhouses, Hillary? Yes. Where you flip the card, green or red? Yes. Always green. Just spoiler alert. Let me give you a little. <laughs> let me give you a little insider tip. You can use this. You can use it. I'll allow it. Um, before you think you're done, get up and do a walk around. So I really find that helps to free up more space. For you steak. just shake it out a little bit it, and find the little nooks and crannies I'll for two Let me tell that you, steak. You got it. My wife does not like steak. She doesn't like red meat. So in the event that I get to go to one of these places, it is a special occasion. So you got to make the most of it. <laughs> get up and do the walk around. It applies to barbecue also. So just a little insider tip. Okay. What an Austin. So, Austin, very appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. But you're not in Austin right now. 
You're on I'm not in Austin. I'm on the road. This is Tripod Live on the road. I took the time, people. She's in Phoenix. We don't even know what happens in Phoenix. I don't know anything is about it a Phoenix. desert. Except Hillary I have a tree did. right you outside. There's a tree outside. <laughs> is People don't think of Phoenix and trees. They think that it is all a desert and cacti. And I got tree, you. from what you told me, has resulted in a lot of bird poop on your per porch. Yes, so, that's very true. Well, there's that. Okay, let's move on to our first category. Our first category, social media. Okay, now I have, let me pull up my list. Let me pull up. Let me pull up the list here because we're gonna do it. It looks like you're looking over at me trying to get the answer. Let me, Hillary. Where's my list? Right, 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 right here. Okay. Is that your other other side? One of these days. Okay. I know. Let's start with your your first recommendation, right? Which is I'm later. Later. I love later. I'm such a later fan. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Later is a social media management tool. There's a lot of them out there, similar to, you know, Planoli. Hootsuite was the first one that came onto the scene. But Later just has a really unique approach in that it's a very visual-focused tool. So it was created around the idea of Instagram. You're trying to create a visual platform, and you're trying to make it cohesive so that your brand really sticks out and people feel more inclined to engage with your content because it's so much more attractive. Uh, so I love Later because it also takes uh, a little bit more of an approach like a Mac. Whereas with other you know, Windows, it's a little bit more clunky. It's not as cohesive of a user-friendly system. Mac is a drag and drop. It's very much like that um, for a, this, that type of a user. This visual Instagram planner. Mm hmm. So you can actually put in and upload all of your content. Let's say that you got a photo shoot done. You pulled some stock photos. You made some graphic design images. You put them in there and then you can drag and drop them around in an order that makes sense. So what I usually do for clients and what I recommend that my coaching clients do is to schedule it out visually and then take their content and apply it to the images. So whether that is going to be a graphic design that's going to be inspirational, or if they're going to go in and they're going to have photos of themselves that's introducing what they do as their service or the types of clients that they work with or misconceptions in their industry, there's a lot of different types of content that you can put with the images that you have that's going to go ahead and create a really cohesive story for your brand. I have used later before, and let me tell anyone out there that watches this, <clears throat> um, you know, uh, Hillary and I are probably, you know, I hate the word expert, but we're, we're power users when it comes to this stuff. Like we see a new app and we're like, Oh, let's try. At least I am. I, I think you are too. Let's oh, try yeah. it out. I kick the tires on. I'm like, can this work into my, I really like this. So can this work with it or can this replace it? Or is this the pits? Right? So I will say that part of the journey, digital marketing and having these tools is trying them out. You may like some, you may not like some. And I just realized I had totally forgot. I've used later before and I have an account. But as I told you, my my credentials logged out are, are timed out and I forgot <laughs> my Instagram password. So I didn't reconnect for the show. I didn't realize you could schedule your stories in later. Mm -hmm. So for yeah. those of you who are doing story, that that is awesome. That's awesome. Yep. So it sends directly to your phone and then you go ahead and you upload. So it's really great just to have a tool that's going to take off some of the thinking that you have and some of the reminders and do that heavy lifting for you to be able to get you that content that you want. Batch, right? And what I mean by that is yes. you're, you're like, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to create my Instagram stories for the week or something. And you schedule them out, right? And then- mm -hmm. It's because of Instagram's API. So this is limited. It'll give you a little reminder. You hit the button. It copies it. You add it into your Instagram. Easy peasy. Yep. But it's less like disruptive. You're like, oh, did I do that? I need to do an Instagram story. You sit down an hour a week, whatever it may be, maybe more, maybe less. And you say, I'm going to do stories. I'm create them, schedule mm -hmm. them. Boom, boom. Efficiency. That's what exactly. that's what that helps. And that's really something we're going to talk a lot about with these other social media management tools. And that's where they are super helpful is in this efficiency um, 
to help you as if you're looking to grow and improve on social. So uh, later, okay, so now let's move uh, the one I have and actually the one um, I use, uh, Content Studio. So I really love Content Studio. It's not necessarily, I think, a known player in the game. Weirdly enough, I think this was one that I got ad served, right? Because of the oh, goal. they got yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Let's target anyone who likes digital marketing apps. And oh boy, am I a sucker for that? Anyways, they did get me. I clicked through. I checked it out, and I was like, "All right, like this looks like it's it's like legit, but it's not necessarily a known player." But I really, really like it. Um, mm -hmm. I'll tell you one thing I do really like about it. It's one of the more affordable with all the tools that it gives you. Um, so this is not necessarily as visual driven as like a later, right? It does have an Instagram plugin and it works actually the same way, but you can't do stories in it. So that might be that, hey, there's a gap there. Maybe later can solve that problem. You can use two systems together. It's not always ideal, but it can be done, right? It's up to you how much you want to do that. You may have differing opinions on that. Ideally, you want to use one, but but nonetheless. So I'll tell you what I really like about uh, Content Studio. One thing that I am big on, particularly when I'm working with starting creative business owners or startups, is they always struggle with the not having enough to post, mm -hmm. right? So a big part, a big thing I talk to them about is, um, okay, well, you can do some work when it comes to curating, right? Curating content from across the web <clears throat> that's still valuable to your prospective customers without taking, you know, don't point them to your competitor, right? Be mm -hmm. thoughtful about it, but position yourself as someone who adds value, right? If you're an accountant and, you know, um, there's uh, uh, some blog posts about the new triple P forgiveness, uh, process, right? Share that. That kind of puts you in this position of credibility, right? And trust. I love that is a built-in thing inside of Content Studio. You can set topics, you can set um, industries, and it kind of feeds it up. And then with like two clicks, you can schedule it and post it out. The other thing I really like is you can set um, uh, categories. So for example, you can say, all right, this is my, this is a LinkedIn post and I want to set times when this post could go out, right? Um, it makes it even more kind of set it once, click it, see how that works. And, you know, content marketing is always, and social is always about looking at data and making changes. But I like how you can say, oh, I, if I always want my post to go out around noon or nine or whatever, you can set these categories and fill them. Fill buckets. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really smart. I do like that. There, the one thing I don't love about it um, is like it has this thing of like, oh, you can create a a blog inside of it, and I don't know. Maybe that's mm. for people who don't have, but I, I don't know how helpful that is. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just really like Content Studio, and again, the thing I like is that it has a lot of really powerful tools. Um, but it's like at a really affordable price. Cause I think the big thing is a lot of times with these really robust is like, Oh, I can't afford that starting out, you know, yeah. I can't afford $150 per seat when I'm just starting or whatever it might be for all these features. And that usually scares people away. Yeah. Um, and as you shouldn't, you should be able to, you know, the difference between later and this platform, it really depends on where your customer is and what platforms you're going to be using most effectively and most often. So for yeah. companies that are going to be using Instagram more often, later is likely going to be a better tool for you. If you're going to be using Facebook and other platforms more often without needing that visual component as strongly, then Content Studio is going to be a good fit. But totally. these are both really good options. And that's the thing is like, it's about what's a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. We've used these for our clients, for ourselves. And that's why we're bringing them to you that, that they're at least worthy of you potentially exploring. So there is a third one, and this was another one that you brought to the table, and it is Sprout Social. So do you my want to talk love about and love my light. I love Sprout Social. They do such a good job too with their 
education. They have a ton of data that they put out. They put out a social index every year, which I recommend all of my clients go look at. I recommend that you go look at it. It has just tons of data around how customers are buying online, what activities they're doing more of, less of, where your brand needs to be, et cetera. So they just do a fantastic job of educating, regardless of whether or not you use the platform itself. And then also when it comes to using that platform as we're scrolling through, I'm like, where are we? <laughs> I was trying to move ahead. I was trying to plan ahead and I blew it. Okay. Sorry, no, you're good. I'm like, where are we going? Um, but Sprout is one of the more expensive options. Sprout is something that we would use uh, if you're in an agency setting or if you have a larger team, that's going to be one that you're going to want to um, invest a little bit more into. But it is so valuable. I have nothing but good things to say about Sprout and their analytics reporting. If you are in the business of using analytics in order to inform your decisions, around what or at least work with someone who can help you navigate exactly that. you always should but sometimes realistically business owners are only able to look at their measurements once a quarter maybe twice a year if they're lucky so we're not shaming you uh, no. but you definitely are going to want to uh, use a platform like this if you are ready to scale and have a team that is going to constantly be looking constantly be measuring and optimizing how you're interacting with your audience. Yeah, this is also one for those bigger brands. This is something that a lot of them get into that social listening type thing, which, you know, that's a real, I would almost say. That's free mature. data. It's like, oh, but it's almost like, a like, it's like a mature practice, right? Like, I don't think that many people, like, it's, it's something where you, you do have a, someone in a role, social media role, I think at your business you know, social listing can open up so many new channels, but it's, it's usually something that, you know, it's, it's an, it's an advanced maneuver, if you will, when it comes to being a, a small business, but it's something for a lot of the brands that you work with Hillary. I know this is a lot of what they're doing. I'm sure. Absolutely. I, when you think about how much it costs to get customer feedback and the systems that you have to put in place, if you are a retailer like Kroger, trying to get feedback about your customers, a better, quicker and efficient way is to track what people are saying online and be able to see that. It's also really important for uh, crisis management in the oh, yeah. event that there is an uptick yeah. in the amount of mentions that are happening that are negative. Software like Sprout can actually tell you what type of sentiments coming through. And mm. if it is increasing in volume at a fast enough pace that someone needs to jump on it immediately. If they're using poop emojis or if yeah. they can somehow read the gifts that I will send to the airlines when mm -hmm. my flight is delayed, they know this is an they unhappy know. camper versus a happy camper. Yeah. So and Sprout doesn't do uh, visual image tracking, but there are other softwares out there like Brandwatch who do. So if you're Starbucks and you just want to also be able to pull in when people are posting a photo of their Starbucks, even they're not saying the brand or they're talking about the brand. There's actually image recognition for logos and for sayings and slogans in images that can be used by these larger brands. Very cool. Okay, so that is our social media section. And now we're gonna move into content creation. And like I said, this is the one we, I think have, we have a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, now, we're gonna have to go these, fast. We are gonna have to go fast, yeah. Some of these are apps. Some of them are platforms. We're gonna have to go fast. On we go. Okay, here we go. All right, so this first one was mine. It's called Vlog Easy. Um, if you want to be a vlogger, that's a video blogger, or if you even want to create um, videos for your stories, Vlog Easy is fantastic because what it is, you record a video, it automatically determines where there is um, silence, and it creates jump cuts. Oh, I love. A, yeah, if you don't know what a jump cut is, it's just where, and you you, it, you may not know them, but you see them all the time on YouTube. It's which when one clip ends, the next one jumps right in real quick. So this will, you just record, you hit stop, it, it reads it, and it cuts your clip down. And on top of that, you can add stickers, GIFs, text, that kind of thing. So vlog easy, um, great tool. I think they have a freemium. I pay for it, but I believe it's freemium. So that's the first one. Um, like I said, we do have to move fast. 
I don't want to move so fast to give you whiplash. But I uh, love that app. That's amazing. Well, it's super cool. Again, you're not going to be surprised by this. I think many of these are ones that served me on ads. So just to the power of, of advertising, <laughs> I'm a real sucker for it. Okay. This was another one. This is one I use um, for brand consistency and it is called Dark Room. Now it is an app on your phone, but it looks like as we look at even the screenshot that they've evolved it to be across um, the OS, Mac OS environment so that it is for phone, translates to uh, iPad and into uh, your desktop. Here is what I love about uh, Darkroom. And I think with a lot of these, these photo apps, there's gonna be overlap as we mm -hmm. talk about that. Um, the thing I like about this is you can set a certain filter style and create a custom and save it. So I have a certain look. I use it 90% of the time for my Instagram posts, but I'm like, okay, this is my tricycle creative filter, right? So it pushes the blues a little subtly. Mm -hmm. it, I like things really like oversaturated and also real bright. So I, I, like that's the look I like and I want for the brand. So you can save that and then you can use it whenever you want. So that's mm -hmm. called. The next one is one that you recommended. And it is. And if you don't want to go dark room, you may want to go light room. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to be in the dark, you might want to be in the light. I was going to say they do the same thing. Isn't that weird? They really do. They do the same thing. So Adobe has Lightroom, which was originally part of their Adobe suite. That was a download. You know, you purchase it. Back in the day, you had a disc. I don't even have a disc insert in my computer that. anymore. Have, yeah. Um, gosh, blows my mind. I remember floppy disks. Yep. So you, you know, put that in. You've got the software on your computer. Now it's all on your phone and the phone version is freemium. They have a lot of accessibility. Same thing that you can do as far as really adjusting and tweaking your image until you have a custom filter that you can save and then you're able to easily put that on. So like you, I also have custom filters for Social HQ and for clients. But what I usually like to do and what I recommend is to do a couple of different filters depending on where your photos are gonna be taken. So if you're indoors, outdoors, if it's really light, if it's really dark, cause mm -hmm. that's also gonna help if you are in a you know really dark room, but your filter was created in a very bright room, your output is gonna look a little bit different. So you do wanna toy around with it. You do wanna mess with it so that you can easily have those and just start plugging and playing right away with your content. Totally. And in my, my life as a, on the run, okay, run and gun content producer. That's great advice. Cause yeah, you never know where you're gonna be taking those photos. And I will say with a lot of the modern phones, you can take the photo and then you can apply the filter also after, right? So, yeah. so having those various different filter options, you don't necessarily need to take it using that filter. Although some of these allow you to do that, you can kind of see what it's gonna look like real time. Um, you can just take it, apply the filter after. And I have all of these on my phone, by the way. I'm like obsessed with camera apps. I had to stop downloading them. You're a master just, tinkerer. It's, I, it's just, I can't help it. Like, I love it so much. Like, I just, I love tinkering with that stuff. So let me pull up the next one here. Now, this one is kind of a cousin of a platform that you don't love, love, but maybe I'll convince you otherwise. So this is, we're, we're going down an Adobe hole real quick. Um, and just when it comes to Adobe, a lot of these are freemium or you might, if you want to use a bunch of them, you might just be better off buying Creative Suite, which gives mm -hmm. you access to their whole range of tools on mobile, on desktop, on the iPad, right? So Rush is actually Adobe Premiere Rush. And what it is, is it is video editing uh, on your phone, or as you see here, it crosses devices like most things do. But the thing I like about this is you can do multi-track video editing. So where that's helpful is if you have a video, a photo, a graphic, which you can create graphics, you can see in this 
on my on the screen here, you can add title effects onto things. You can create all these things inside of Adobe Premiere Rush. Super useful too because Adobe gives you like, oh, do you want to? Are you creating a vertical, a square, an HD? Like it gives you like the the frame, the the canvas, if you will. To, so you can create a video for Instagram Stories or for Instagram that's square or for Instagram that's HD or for Facebook, what what have you. So it really scales nicely. I really really love Adobe Rush. So the last Adobe Play here is. Give me one second here. I got a, and I don't know if you've used this one. Have you? Adobe Spark. Yes. So why don't you talk about this one? Because the next one's also you. But 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 with what experience you have with Adobe Spark, why don't you talk a little bit about this? I love it. I it it's really similar to not right on the money, similar to Canva, but it has the same mentality where it makes graphic design really easy. It has a lot of pre-made templates. So if you don't feel like you are the strongest creator or designer, this app makes it extremely easy to create more fun social graphics with that text overlay or with GIFs or with motion so that you have content that is dynamic. It is on brand for you, but it's not necessarily pulling away from, you know, just a standard stock photo on your feed with your logo. Totally. And this is where, again, I use this. It, um, I have Canva, but I don't use as much because I pay for Adobe. So I use this one. And the one thing I do really really like about this is similar to rush where you can create a one graphic and then you can just resize it, mm -hmm. which I love. And, it, and as you can see on screen here, like it moves the stuff around and then you can manipulate where it is. But if you want to have con the, sa the same content across multiple platforms, but you need it in different sizes and shapes, mm -hmm. or what have you, or you want to tweak it ever so slightly, you can do that. You can also create, um, short little animation videos like this, <laughs> which, which I just like, it's, it's, it's really powerful. And I actually think it's kind of this unknown gem in mm -hmm. the Adobe portfolio. I so, agree with that. I mean, I, I really think this is something a lot of people don't know about, but it's super, super powerful. It is called Adobe Spark. All right. Now the next one is all you. I haven't used this one. InShot. InShot. I InShot. love InShot. InShot is actually very similar to Rush in the fact that it is you edit it, but it's only on your phone. Um, it is freemium. So for the most part, it is free. You do have access to a ton at the free. It's just when you start to get into filters and effects, then you start to uh, get into a little bit more of the funds. But they have amazing music that you can put over that is free for you to use as well. Um, you can add different elements to your video and it just, it's a very easy to use app, which also allows you to reshape your app. So if you do need to go from a 16 by nine standard to a nine by 16 vertical, you can do that as well. It doesn't have the capabilities to be able to just easily like move things around in a recommended place, but it's fairly simple if you have text over your videos to be able to maneuver it around with your fingers and get a really cool product out of it. And I think that's the other thing is we talk about these creative tools, right? Just like with the social media tools, you need to download them, mm -hmm. kick the tires on them, give them, you know, I say like conscientiously give them like a couple weeks, work with them, use them, see if you're like struggling with something and then maybe move on to another one or what if, you know, it's like to, if, if you're, if you're really adventurous, like Hillary and I are, you know, but you need to give a kind of ample time for you to at least get the, at the very least, the basics about it. Yeah. You know? And each tool is going to be different for each person. Some people yeah. love the ability to tap and some people feel it's very difficult to zoom in and zoom out with your fingers. So there's different uh, behaviors that we all have. The most important thing is that you're not paying for something that you're not going to use. 
just because everyone else likes it. So all the tools that we have, check them out. But more importantly, use the free trials. If you feel like you haven't gotten enough time out of it, go ahead and contact them. If they have a free yeah. trial and you feel like you need a couple more weeks with it, send them an email. For the most part, they'll come back to you and they'll extend your trial with no penalties just to give you some more time to get used to the app. The squeaky wheel gets the grease, as they say. That's a just marketing thing. Nice. Just <laughs> ask. This is just what he's saying. Ask. Let me just talk about like I'm not going to take this too far down this, but like so many people just don't even think to just ask. Sometimes oh, yeah. just ask. Something. What's the horrors that can happen? They don't extend your trial. Okay. And oh, you move don't. on. And you That's move okay. on. Absolutely. I just want to reiterate links to everything we're talking about uh, on the YouTube video down below in the comments. So uh, I'm sure you can very easily Google these things, but there are some affiliate links down below. So check those out. Okay. Uh, my next one, we're moving away from visual and we're moving into the written and it is Hemingway app. So are you, do, do you know about Hemingway app? I don't. Okay. This is the dream. I, I love this. So for my copywriters or anyone that's writing words, for your social posts, your blog, your website, Hemingway app is the jam. So what it does is it scans what you write. And the big thing about it is making sure that what you're writing is super simple to understand. Like it'll take out flowery, excessive language, which this may shock you, Hillary. I am prone to a lot of flowery, excessive language. When oh, I you love your adjectives. I love a good adjective. Hemingway, oh. I'm the hell out of here with this adjective. <laughs> so I, so, but you'll see, I have it up on the screen. It tells you, you know, it kind of like gives you a grade and then it tells you what it's kind of like point system are, is. So it's like, okay, in green, use of passive voice meeting the goal of two or fewer. Like there's certain like things to make this clear, you know, yeah. um, one sentence is very hard to read. So this sentence it's identifying this is very hard to read. And this is so important now, maybe more than ever where attention spans are, are, are so small, but I think also with mobile traffic for, for, for the longest time being, uh, the the way that m the majority of traffic reading things on a on a mobile device mm -hmm. you need a short, clear concise Hemingway app um, does that and all it is is it's you can just go to the website it's HemingwayApp.com um, it does as you see have a desktop app but Gosh, um, I love this this is really really the jam super easy to use you can just copy paste whatever you've written right in here. And and it and it I love it. So Hemingway app really love this when we're talking uh, the words, if you will, about uh, content creation. Okay, so the next one I'm excited to 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 bring up here because you the other day had we're doing a uh, Instagram live. You you cheated on me with someone else on an Instagram live. How dare you? I'm just kidding. Um, and you brought on was it the creator of this? Yeah, she's the founder and CEO of Life Laps. Okay, uh, boom. Yeah, here it is. Yep. Yeah. Life Lapse is stop motion. It's incredible. I, I actually just made another one this morning. When you, <laughs> when you uh, listen, truth the. Content marketing works. When I saw you were doing that and I tuned in for part of the, the discussion and I saw the life, the, the time lapse you did, I was like, uh -huh. this is cool. This is so cool. So yeah. Tom, what, is, what is life lapse? Life Lapse is a stop motion app. So Sarah created it. Uh, she was working in advertising and marketing. She was creating social content uh, videos and they were just the accessibility for stop motion was so skewed. It was very expensive to invest in for companies, but it was so necessary. So they she created this app, which I admire her so much for, but the app itself is so easy to use. They have what's called a ghost feature so that when you are taking the photos, you can kind of, I think you might be able to see it in yeah, that yeah, one. You can yeah. see yeah. where the, where the object is that you're moving so that you're easily able to capture your content. Cool. So it took about 30 minutes to put together a room and steal some furniture from downstairs 
to make a little mini set for the photo that I did, but it's a really fun and unique way for creators to build dynamic content. I'm going to tell you, I mean, trike, I don't know if I ever told you, my tricycle, my actual tricycles, so my little mini tricycle back here, and my other mini, mini tricycle, it's it's named. My logo has a name. It's called Trike. He's going to be moving around. I'm going to use this app. I'm going to have a lot of fun. Yes, yeah. I love that. Yeah. So this is super cool. Uh, life Lapse. Um, and life is this, this, is, yeah, this would make sense. It's only, it's only a, it's a mobile app, right? Yes, that was, that was I cool. believe so. Okay. Yeah, it's a mobile app and then they, it's also a freemium. So they have an opportunity to upgrade. If you do find yourself creating more content, you want a little bit more uh, features, you're able to use that and upgrade. All right. So we have one last, um, uh, what am I looking for? Platform that we're thankful <laughs> for in the content creation. gets a lot, but it's the last one. It's Don't be last. sad, it's, but this is a good list. You should like, I hope people kick the tires and come back and tell I know. them. I'm, or for that matter, if we missed any, if we missed any, put them in the comments. I'd love to hear. I'm a tinkerer. I'm going to download them. I'm a, I'm a sucker. Uh, Ross, we'll do it all Thanksgiving. Oh, That's all I have to do. Square fit. <laughs> now this is like a kind of a stripped down version of some we talked about before, but I thought it was kind of unique enough that I wanted to bring it in. Um, so it does not have necessarily all of the bells and whistles of rush or maybe even in shot, but it scratches the itch. If you are just looking to create square video from maybe an existing video you've already shot, if you want to keep it super simple, if you're just like, Oh, you know, you can upload what's called 16 by nine HD longer video on Instagram. But Instagram and a lot of the platforms tend to like Square. This was like a production person's nightmare, by the way. Like I remember a time before we had to consider three different file formats for video, which is mind numbing. But anyways, if you just want to take something and make it Square, Square Fit Photo Video Editor um, is fantastic. Recommend it. I use it. Um, if I you know have an HD video, I can bring it in. For a lot of times, what I do is if I have an HD video, bring it in. And you see this a lot on Instagram where maybe you have like text along the top, right? I'll tell you who does this a lot. Do you know a guy named Gary V? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you'll see a lot of like, you know, you have the text along the top or bottom, but you have the video in the middle. Square Fit app can scratch that itch for you if, if that's what you're looking to do. If you're trying okay. to be Gary V, get in there. Everyone who's trying to be Gary V out there, which is every single client I've ever worked which with. Which I will say, if you want to be Gary V, please know that he has like 15 people on his content creation team that are solely dedicated to his content. Yeah. So he's not sitting there whipping it out. He's extremely smart and extremely talented, but... I think that the hustle on the move mentality, it's its raw enough that people don't fully realize that he has someone shooting it, who's sending it to someone that's editing it, who's shooting, sending it to someone that's cutting it down to sending to somebody who's approving it. So there's yeah. a lot of people that he's got. There's it's a lot of stuff behind the scenes. The sentiment is there, right? And if you, mm -hmm. if you agree with the sentiment, good on you for content creation, things like that. But, but sometimes you know, matching exactly what he's doing can be a real challenge for, for a lot of creative business owners out there. Okay. So the next category um, that we're going to talk about here, hold on one second here. I got to pull, pull up my screen to show you is email marketing. And we're, uh, I think we only have one in this category. It's one that I, I brought to the table recently um, and it's active campaign. Now, kind of like our discussion before, this may not be the best solution for someone who is like just starting out. But mm -hmm. if you have made the decision that you are ready to invest, if you will, in your email marketing, I highly recommend Active Campaign. And here's why Active Campaign has a ton of super smart segmenting automation features that it's just, it's, there is a learning curve here too. Let me say this, right? 
this is not as simple as a MailChimp. We talked about this before, right? MailChimp, mm -hmm. and though I think MailChimp is, I've had to navigate MailChimp again for a client in the last uh, month or so. MailChimp ain't necessarily easier to navigate either, but but this is a little more complicated. There's a lot more tools. There's a lot more parts to it, but they can really pay off. For example, you know, if you have people on your on your email list, you can set up automations for all right. If they visit this page on my website, then I want to send them this email, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's really advanced. You can segment out very specifically. Um, I like how you can integrate it into your website. Um, very smart. Again, I recommend it, but this is, you know, there's a learning curve here for sure. Mm -hmm. Now you didn't, I don't think you threw in for an email marketing, but I think you had said that you, you have used or use MailChimp, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. MailChimp is usually what I use um, because I'm not an email marketer. No. I, I, my, my focus is elsewhere. So with, as a, non-expert emailer uh mailchimp is very easy to use very friendly to send the initial welcome email into your campaign oh. easy to have your segmented audiences uh not necessarily as easily based on behavior that i know about but i'm also not an expert in it so mm -hmm. i would be able to tell you but only it does have some of those it's but different. on the mailchimp it's on the usually it's on the tiers of payment this does yeah. not if i remember correctly i don't think this has a free free version um, so again, this is for if and when you're ready to maybe level up or, or like really, okay, I want to really do email marketing. I want to do it heavy. I want to invest mm -hmm. in um, really love active campaign. Okay. Now we're moving along. There was only one in that category. So that made that one easy. Live streaming and video. <laughs> now, this is what we know a lot about. We've been doing these live streams for I have a feeling you're going to have a lot of opinions here. I don't. I don't have that many opinions. <laughs> I, I really don't. I mean, I could have. I could spend a whole show on this, but in the interest of time, that's not what we're doing. Um, the one thing. Oh, of course. Okay. Since I'm logged in, I'm having trouble. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Break. Break. Let's let's reset here. I have to open an incognito window because. I'm yeah. Go in. ahead and just take a look at us. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Ah. We'll just, we'll, we'll take up the screen here. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Here we go. All right. Okay. Let me, I'm getting there. Wait for it. This is going to be worth it. Wait for it. Okay. This is the exact platform we're actually using right now. And I have tried <laughs> many, many live streaming platforms. Okay, let me just tell you, I've used OBS, I've used OBS Streamlabs, I have used uh, many others. They are all very good. But if you're looking to just get started in live streaming, StreamYard is the way to go. Now, I mentioned before affiliate links. I would be so appreciative if you are considering Streamlab, down below in the comment or in the description, there is an affiliate link. Again, no cost to you. But if you do sign up for StreamYard, I get pennies on the cent if you do sign up. Here's what I love about StreamYard. Now, you and I have done shows pre-StreamYard, mm -hmm. post-StreamYard. And my, my problem is, again, tinkerer. As a producer of the show and as a host of the show, as you kind of just saw, it's really hard to navigate a lot of things, to keep the, the balls in the air while still talking and having the conversation and you do it so well i i do it i do i do it it gets done let's just say that Streamyard makes it so easy you can see on the screen it has like set windows you just click it and it moves things around so here let's show you okay let's say we just want me to talk oh my god there i am hillary's gone where is she she's back oh, hello oh, she is she was gone for a second well, let's say we want to just bring this in and have a little background. Oh, that's so easy. This one. Oh, I'm I'm big. I'm in charge now. Here, apparently, I'm a big. It, yeah, there you go. I'm a giant, right? But then it could be just me with a screen share, or as we've been defaulting here, screen share and us, or full screen share, right? These are all just clicks of buttons. I've used OBS before, and it it is a lot more involved to do that. So Streamyard. Highly recommend, really love this platform. 
Do you have anything to say as someone who has been a guest with me while we use the StreamYard platform? I will say as a guest, it is extremely easy to use. It's extremely easy just to click on the link and be able to get here. Um, I don't have access to be able to immediately get into the live stream. I have to be invited in. So Ross, as the producer, can control a lot of the um, conversation. We have a private chat back here, which we do not oh, use yeah. because we are working. Live, I just yeah, we'll that, do it live. Yeah, I forgot about that. There's a private chat. Yeah, you can uh, you know yeah. mute guests. You can remove them. You can add them in, and this supports. I don't know exactly because they've been making a lot of updates, but you can do more than two also. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but but I think you can bring in multi more than two people. But great, great. Love so, live yeah. streaming. It's okay. great. So the other one I have, um, hold on here. Give me now now I got it. No, oh, it's a whole thing again. Okay, here we're gonna here we go. Let's show you the power of here we are. Actually, the here you power know of stream oh, yard. No, here we go. Live. Here we go. Oh, get it. Wait, how do I? Hold on, how do I? I'm like, you don't want me here? I'm trying to know. No, I'm trying you to know. Throw me backstage. No, no, here, here. Oh, I don't want this kind of attention, Ross. <laughs> but hello, it's me. Welcome to the Not Rewind Show, but Tripod Live. Here I'm back. You thought I was gone, but I'm here the whole time. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is my second recommendation. Self-serving, but I'm really happy of, and proud of this platform that I've created. Um, it's called Show and Tell Video. Show and Tell Video is actually a platform that I developed to help creative business owners, and I cleverly call it. It's an all-in-one video marketing platform. So its real strengths fall in um, being able to capture video testimonials. So super powerful. If you have clients, customers, you want to get testimonials from, you just send them an email, send them a link. They don't need to download anything. They don't need an app. They do it all within their browser, whether it's on their mobile, desktop, tablet, whatever. So you can easily create video testimonials and then you can use the video testimonials on your website, on your socials, wherever. You can also create branded videos. So this is big because a lot of people can't afford to like hire someone even for a half day. You know, I mean, I think even the cheapest videographer on a half day rate is like $500, $800, $1,000. You can create a video with your existing tools, right? You can create expert tip videos. You can do product explainer videos. You also have video email. So you can actually send video inside of an email. Um, which is super powerful and can be used inside of a sales cycle. That's how I use it. Uh, just to say, thanks, say, Hey, do you have any questions? And then lastly, there's what I call a case study video. So what that is, is kind of like a super testimonial. You can ask someone a series of questions. So for example, you could ask them, you know, what was your favorite part about working with social HQ? And, and they'd answer that. And then the next prompt would come up, you know, like how Hillary is, how awesome is Hillary on a scale of one to 10? And they would say 10. And then the next question would come up and say, would you recommend Hillary to other business owners if they're having problems with social media? And they would say, yeah, duh, of course I would. What am I, an idiot? This is how it would work, exactly how it would work, actually. They would say those exact things, Hillary. I so, love this review. Yeah, this is a... <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm just really, me more, proud. Me more. <laughs> I'm just really proud of this product. So I want to at least bring it. And I know it is, I'll say self-serving, but listen, when I made it, I'm proud of it. I'm going to share it with you. What am I, an idiot? I'm not going to, I'm just going to build something and let it just collect dust over here. No, I'm not an idiot. So now in the last 10 minutes we come, we're doing, man, we've really done this well. We're coming to our last category. <laughs> and that is, it's like we're pros. Productivity. All right. Now let's, I'm gonna start with one of yours. Right, give me a second here, I gotta pull it up, right? Now it formerly was called G Suite, but now it's called Google Workplace. I, I In the time that I sent G Suite to true. when it became Google Workplace. It's true. It's literally, yeah. this has happened in the past couple weeks since we were- We're working in real time, folks. It's true, it's true. Uh, I love G Suite. If, 
you are a business owner and you are looking to centralize all of your documentation, all of your email, G Suite is, it, aside from the fact that it's owned by Google, there's so much to it. Whether you're looking for a way to have meetings and you don't want to be using Zoom, you can use Google Meet. If you want to be hosting your emails and getting all of your business emails into Gmail, you can use Gmail. The calendar. I use that. Like that. Do you, do you, use, you use this? Uh, so, of course. So, so here's, yeah, here's the great thing about this, right, is you can have a company email, but it's Gmail. Because let yeah. me tell you, I'm going to tell you, here's, here's, there's nothing worse than like GoDaddy webmail. Sorry, GoDaddy. Uh, oh, I know. The pits. It's the pits. And like, they're still living, or at least last time I worked with them in it, like they're still living like it's like 20 years ago. And like, well, you have email, there's a size limit. I'm like mm -hmm. what? Size mm -hmm. limit on email? Like, what the hell is that? I know. And with Gmail also, I mean, with G Suite, you're able to create presentations. You're able to write documents. You're able to share documents. You're able to create forms, which are essentially you to be able to solicit feedback from yep. vendors, partners, clients. It's a really wonderful, all-inclusive tool that's a very affordable cost for businesses that I would highly, highly recommend to just streamline your efficiencies. And their biggest thing too, I mean, also with it built in, you know, Google Drive. So the all one the storage, thing, which is great. Yes. Yeah. Uh oh, you have a, you have a, but wait. I have a thing. thing. Uh -huh. The new icons make it a little different. I, I, that's like find. a whole separate show, I think, for us to talk about <laughs> these new logos, which are. I dark. spent like 20 minutes looking for my <laughs> calendar the other day. I'm like, um, where is it? It's total. I don't know why they did that. It's too on the nose. It's it just is. too much. Okay. Now, continuing on the trend of productivity, this is one that I swear by. Asana. Oh. I love, love, love Asana. It is, I am a, I am a taskmaster. Let me put it that mm -hmm. way. But I need to, and I have a, SEO manager, I have a, a digital ads manager, and I have a marketing assistant. And I need to know, and some of them manage my clients directly. But here's the deal. I need to at least be kept in the loop of what's going on. And That's Asana true. helps me do that. It is awesome. And they have an incredibly generous free version. Like, I think I use their free version. I've used their the free version literally for... I think four years. I mean, and I, listen, let me tell you, I do a lot of work. I do a lot of work. I get shit done. Okay. I have a lot of tasks. I love it. And I used it for, it was only this year when my business grew that I expanded and went into the paid, which has been awesome. But I love, love, love Asana. Definitely recommend it. You know, um, I mean, really to, to kind of anyone, but mm -hmm. you know, you have to be, here's the thing, a task, a task management system is only good if you're actually going to use it, Yeah. right? So maybe Asana is not right for you, um, but that doesn't mean you should throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? Look, there's a bunch of others. I've used them. Maybe another show, I'll bring them in, but you try out other ones if you don't like Asana, but I, I just love, love, love Asana. Okay. Yeah. And the best part too, is that it just, it, it keeps you on task as you have other team members who have to come together in order to collaborate on a project. It keeps everybody informed and also gives visibility into the projects that you're working on. So yep. instead and you know, of trying to work search fields. So like for yeah. me, I can very quickly click on something and see what my team's waiting on me for, or yep. what we're waiting on clients for very helpful at that 10,000 foot view if you are the creative business owner and you're working with other people. Yeah. Um, okay, so our last one is kind of a, a double, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring up yours. Um, and it is Acuity, and I, and I yeah. kind of put together, and Calendly, right? But we'll show Acuity, because this one's yours. Talk about Acuity. I love Acuity. Sounds like I'm saying Acuity. By the acuity. Way. I love acuity. Love a good uh, <laughs> uh, acuity is a scheduling tool. So it allows for you to take away that back and forth of when are you able to meet? 
what time works best for you? Tuesday at noon? No. Tuesday at two? No. So it takes out all of that and essentially says, here is my availability. Pick a time, pick a place, pick an appointment, etc. What it also does too is that if you are in a business where you are consistently trying to generate your discovery calls and mm -hmm. you don't want to accidentally miss an opportunity for a lead, it actually gives you a way for people to book. So whether you're a creative business owner, even if you're a hairdresser, all of that, it allows you They're to- They're like embedded, right? You can embed them on yes. your website? And on your social media. That's why I like Cutie. Yeah is because it has a direct plugin with Facebook. So you can actually have a button on your Facebook to book an appointment. You can have an appointment booker on your Instagram um, and it's built into the app. So for that reason, I love that it just takes out that difficulty uh, and then adds that social layer on top of what Calendly has. Yeah, and that's just, again, showing both sides uh, here. I, I love Calendly. Again, both of this is just like everything else we've talked about. They're similar, have a lot of overlapping. They have some things that they do different, right? Mm -hmm. If you try one, don't like it, maybe consider the other one. Cause the, the actual tool is amazing. I, I, it is the bane of my existence. The back and forth email to schedule yeah. meetings. Like I, I, it, 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 it it's like the nightmare Literally, I think I've had nightmares before where the whole nightmare is just like e like 10 email exchanges trying to figure out availability. It, mm -hmm. I, I hate it. It's the worst. It's the worst. So yeah. Calendly, the other thing I use, uh, you can use Calendly for also, and I guess by, by extension, Acuity is like um, for my podcast, right? Oh, okay. Booking guests. You can use it in a lot of different ways. Like to say, oh, okay. Or, hey, do you want to even just a friendly chat? You know, it, I hate the back and forth of availability, whether it's business, personal, or whatever, these tools solve that back and forth email. Um, Ross is sending a Calendly link to his family Christmas just to I make am. sure that everyone will show up Who, at the same time. Yeah, that's right. Who <laughs> wants to, what time are we meeting? What time are we doing the Christmas present opening, opening up? Now, now, well, never mind. It's not on the list, so I almost don't want to bring it up. But there is another tool. I'll just toss it out there real quick. Doodle. That's another one. But anyways, let's keep to the list. Okay. <laughs> so with that, and, and just like we had these scheduled for an hour and we just like killed it. Nail on the head every like, time. So this was our comprehensive list of, you know, marketing tools that we were super thankful for. And I want to, anyone out there, watching this, please tell us in the comments if you try out any of these, if you like them, if we missed any, love to hear. As I've said, I will probably try it out and I'll lose like a weekend to testing out a new app. I'm going to lose part of my weekend, I think, to that, the life lapse. Your wife is going to be so excited about that. She's working a lot this weekend. So when, when, the wife's away, when the wife is away, Ross will play with various different apps for content creation, <laughs> photo and video. It's just the- How cool. do you enjoy your weekend? I order, let me, let me give a sneak peek. I'll order, order Chinese food, because she doesn't like that. And then I will play with a, 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 a time-lapse app. This is oh Ross's God. weekend. That sounds so fun. It's gonna be amazing. Um, okay, so before we wrap up, Hillary, any uh, parting shots? Or let's say, where can people find you if they want to learn more about Hillary Houghton? You can learn more about myself, Social HQ, Life Laps, and the conversation that we had there this week uh, at yoursocialhq.com or at yoursocialhq on all of the social media platforms, particularly Instagram and LinkedIn. Wah, wah, wee, wah. And if you want to learn more about Tricycle Creative, we are on the socials, Hello Tricycle, uh, and on the web, tricycle-creative.com. And with that, I think we wrap up this episode of Tripod Live. And as always, I recommend that you keep pedaling.